I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, Welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. Hello. We are talking about terminal velocity today. We're still in that unit two for its dynamics. And we just want to talk about this concept really quickly. And we're not going to do any problems today. just want to make sure you understand the concept. So here we go. What is terminal velocity? Terminal velocity is the constant speed an object obtains after falling through a fluid like air. You can also see this in, um, in water. You, can, you might have a terminal velocity concept question in water. All right, but it occurs when the net force on the object is equal to zero. All right, so we're just gonna be doing a skydiver in a plane. So we're gonna be in the fluid of air. And remember that uh, it's always this drag, we call it drag, the force due to drag. It's always opposing motion, okay? So a parachuter is falling out of a plane. In a free body diagram, the force due to gravity is down, and that is weight. It is not changing, all right? He's not up there jumping out of a plane and wolfing down a whole bunch of hamburgers. Uh, his mass is staying exactly the same. He's on Earth, so it's 9.81. Now, if you're higher away, there is a slight change, but we're gonna talk about the average of 9.81. So, and then up, he has some force due to a drag. And actually, I'm, you can, I'm just gonna call that, I like to call it a capital D, so they mean the same thing, but drag, okay? That's drag. The force due to drag, and that's really, all that is, is what we call air resistance. It's friction with the air. Okay, he first falls out of a plane. He is headed down, of course, and he is accelerating down because we have acceleration due to gravity, negative 9.81. But as he's accelerating down, he is speeding up, right? He's speeding up because he's accelerating downward. So if I were to do this little sum of the forces in the y equal mass times acceleration in the y, we have that drag force up, we have his force due to gravity down, and it's gonna equal his acceleration in the y. All right, here's what you need to know about drag. You don't need to memorize this formula, but you need to see it to understand this. That drag is equal to one half times this coefficient of drag, which, which you can find out about, we don't wanna waste your time on that, but, uh, but you can kind of figure that out if you wanna look that up on your own. The uh, density, and that's actually the density of the fluid, the area of the person or the object that we're talking about here, that's our free body diagram, our little dot, that's the area. Like in other words, if you're a skydiver and you do the, like the squirrel pose and you're all spread out, that's gonna give you a greater surface area than if you did the little pencil where you're pointed straight down with your hands down and you have less uh, surface area. And then velocity squared. So look at this, as velocity increases, exponentially drag increases. So what happens is you fall out of a plane, you have very little drag, but acceleration is causing you to speed up and speed up and speed up, so your velocity is increasing, so drag increases. So all of a sudden now, you have this next phase where you now have a higher drag. Your force due to gravity stays the same length because you haven't gained any mass. You still have the same matter. Well, eventually, you get to what we call terminal velocity, where drag now equals your force due to gravity, and they would be the same length. All right, when that happens, then you are at terminal velocity because your force due to to your drag equals your force due to gravity, so your acceleration now, so we're gonna say at terminal velocity, this is what this looks like at terminal velocity. Ooh, if I could write that, sorry. Terminal velocity, the drag plus your negative force due to gravity, your weight down, equals zero because you are not accelerating any longer. So as we say here, an object has constant speed now. You're not accelerating any longer because drag equals the force due to gravity. Those should be balanced and, and equal. And I, like I said, you have some little spot in between here where, um, where you're kind of in between. You're not, you've got, you just keep increasing your drag as your force due to gravity stays exactly the same. All right, but you increase that drag as you go because more velocity, more drag. All right, then we hit this terminal velocity. Now this is where sometimes students are like, wait, wait, wait. So 
Um, if that's the case, drag equals force due to gravity. So am I no longer falling anymore? No, that's not the case. You are not no longer falling. You're still falling down. You're just falling at a constant velocity. And by the way, for humans, that's about 120 miles per hour is our terminal velocity. You can tweak that a little bit depending on your surface area and that density of air, how high you start but it's about 120 miles per hour. Now we open up a parachute. All right, well guess what a parachute does? It causes more drag, it causes more friction with the air. So now your drag goes way up. All right, but your force due to gravity is still the same. Your force due to gravity doesn't change because your mass doesn't change. You are still falling though, right? But you've just increased your drag, so you're slowing way down, your speed's way down. Okay, so now you're not at terminal velocity anymore because look, you have an unbalanced force. You are accelerating in the positive direction. How do I know that? Because if I sum my forces in the y equal mass times the acceleration on the y, this one is way greater, bigger magnitude. You're still falling down though. So opposite signs on velocity and acceleration mean that you are slowing down. So now you're slowing down. Well, here's the cool thing. A lot of people don't know this. You do hit one terminal velocity before your parachute's open. Now you hit another terminal velocity with your parachute. Uh, uh, sorry, this one is without your parachute open. Now you hit another terminal velocity with your parachute open. How does that work? Because guess what? As you slow down, your velocity is now decreasing, which means your drag is decreasing. And you get back to another terminal velocity where your drag equals, if I did these about the same length, equals your force due to gravity yet again, but this is with the parachute. That, uh, that speed is about 10 miles per hour, 10 to 15 for a human. And you hit a second terminal velocity with a parachute. And why is that? Because it, there's not, here you're accelerating. You have not hit terminal velocity here yet. You're accelerating in the positive direction. You're still falling down but you're slowing down. You slow down and slow down until this velocity decreases, so drag decreases, and you're back to these equaling again and being balanced, and you're back to terminal velocity again. Thank goodness, because you wouldn't want to hit the ground at this terminal velocity. You would want to hit the ground at this terminal velocity. All right, so there you go. So terminal velocity is just a constant speed because there is no acceleration. But that's how you achieve terminal velocity, by understanding that as you're falling, velocity increases, so does drag until they're equal. Then you open up the parachute, and now you start slowing down until, once again, drag decreases, and it's equal to your force due to gravity. Thank you, and have a great day, and happy physicsing.